We're going to the Fiesta Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're in Tempe, Arizona, and it's hot, but it's another national championship, and we're very excited to be there. And we're just going to have true Tex-Mex cuisine, as true and authentic as it's going to get. The recipe for the white chicken chili is from my chef girlfriend in San Antonio, Texas, and her mother's method for making burritos. And I met Tony 35 years ago when I moved here to State College. And she was a Mexican-American who lived in the apartment above me. And she had a little boy named Sean. And I had a little 13-month-old named Jesse. And she taught me how to cook Mexican food. And I taught her how to speak English. <laughs> And we spent a lot of time together, but the food and her methods of cooking are absolutely amazing. So this is almost a little bit of a tribute to Tony, and I wish she were here. Uh, you'd love her. She's a gorgeous woman with black hair down to here. The first thing we're going to do is our side dish, because Jeannie has to, we have to get this in the oven. We're going to bake this for you. And I call it a baked corn souffle. It is not a souffle at all. There's nothing. It's just that when it bakes, it puffs up, and it's so light and airy. I, for loss of a better word, it's a baked corn souffle. And it's just when you see how simple this is, and this is why I keep my shaved corn around the house. And my kids, I, I well, my Jesse, my son in Pittsburgh, he'll eat a half. Of, he'll eat a half of one of these casseroles full of this. So we're just going to take four. Now I'm using jumbo eggs. I'm not telling you not to use jumbo eggs, but I kind of like that extra little pudding-like creamy texture when you use a bigger egg, a bigger yolk, a little more protein. So we're going to get these in really fast. No shells. I'm going to add, I add a generous tablespoon of sugar. Um, I'm adding a generous tablespoon of sugar because I kind of like my corn souffle a little on the sweet side. And half a teaspoon of salt and white pepper. And a quarter teaspoon, a quarter cup, Wondra, Wondra flour. You're all familiar with Wondra for sauce and gravy? You know, I thought I was the only person that used that for like 100 years. And now all of them on the Food Network are starting to use Wondra flour. It's amazing. It's, it's starting to resurface. I think it's one of those 50s things. And we've got two cups of cream. Cream. I guess we might call this a Creole dish instead of a Cajun dish if we were in New Orleans, because we're using the flour, the eggs. And nothing fancy. I'm just going to whisk this together. I don't even need a whisk. And one of the things. I do, I should talk about a little bit about gadgets for tailgates, because you could actually mix this up there, and if you play your cards right, you can get it to bake on top of a grill, if you keep the lid closed. It'll actually bake in, in, a, closed, in a small closed grill. But when I go to tailgate, I, I like to take as few utensils as possible, but I like to remember, <laughs> I, don't, I like to go with what I need. But one of the things I do is if I'm shopping like in a Bed Bath & Beyond or somewhere, and I see some gadget that I really think I want to have, and I think, oh, I don't want to pay $14 for that. What I do is I buy it, and I take my old one and stick it in a little shoebox, which is where they, my utensils go to retire for the tailgate season. So then I have these older utensils that I just take the box in the trunk of the car, and I have all of my utensils ready to go. So that, oh, the other thing about gadgets, don't buy one of those new corn zipper things. The, they do not work. They crush your kernels. It is, I bought two of them. They're really not worth the investment. It's like a little razor blade that you just pull down. It might make it easier, but I don't like the texture of the corn. So on that note, I'm going to add two cans of cream-style corn. And I'm going to add four cups of freshly shaved corn. If you want to make this without fresh shaved corn, it won't be quite as delicious, but you'll substitute two cans of whole kernel corn that's been well drained. I'm going to stir this together. I 
when you taste this, which is why we're making this one live, because we made one yesterday. It's back there. I actually made two of these for you guys, because I think you're really all going to love this. I'm going to use a little bit of no stick spray in a 9 by 13 casserole. Simply pour this in. This is as easy as this is. This is done. And Jeannie, if you will put this in oven number one at 350, at 350 degrees for 55 minutes and through the magic of television bring the finished one out. <laughs> Are you spoon or tie spoon bread or bread pudding? No, spoon bread is made like, just like a corn pudding. I haven't had it for a long time. I don't make it, but it is a custardy spoon. I wouldn't call this a bread because there's no bread crumbs or right. bread right. ingredients in it. But a spoon bread would basically be a, a bread to get it creamy that's been soaked for a really long time in, in probably eggs and milk so that it's almost like cottony, squishy. And there's nothing that, uh, no, nothing's puddling in the bottom of the bowl. So you have to really let your bread cubes or whatever you're using soak for a long, long time. And that would, it would be similar, but we're not using bread. But this is what we made yesterday. This is what this looks like. And it is absolutely delicious. And I'm not taking this plastic wrap off for the camera at this point, because we're going to just pop this in the microwave oven when it comes time to eat. And it's already ready to go. So we're going to put this up here. Now, burritos. The white chicken chili recipe I'm providing for you. I obviously had to make that. And I'm sure that not one person here is going to raise their hand if I say, have you never made a pot of chili before? Is there anybody who hasn't made a pot of chili? OK, then you know how to make chili. You slice the dice and you put all your ingredients in. The only difference between this is it is truly white out, white out being Penn State. If we have a white out, this is the menu you want to serve. Uh, we're having the white chicken chili burritos with the white baked shaved corn souffle. The only difference is, is we're using chicken instead of beef. All I did was I take, took some pounded chicken breasts, same amount, same quantities. You can get the same thing with beef here. And in Mexico or in Texas, they really don't use ground meats that much. They use shredded meats in their chilies. So what we did was we took chicken breasts and we just sliced them into like little juliennes or little strips. So the first time I made the recipe, I thought, well, this is really good, but I felt I was missing something. And I wanted a little bit more than just that white meat flavor. So I called my butcher, and I asked him to coarse grind me some boneless, skinless chicken thighs. So the second time I made the recipe, when I got that nice little chicken strip in there, the little juliennes of chicken, and that coarse ground, the flavorful thigh meat in the chili, I thought it was just heaven. It was perfection. So this is the white chicken chili recipe, and there are no tomatoes in it. It's basically beans, OK? So you have. We have your white chicken chili pre-made. Burritos. Does, shall I talk about burritos now? Burritos is, is Mexican street food. And the story behind burritos is kind of neat. Back in the early 1900s, around 1910, there was a little guy during the Mexican Revolution. And his name was Juan Mendez. And he had a, a, a street, he was a street vendor. And he sold his Mexican food off of his, his little street cart. And he was, it was very, very popular. But the revolution broke out, and he had to move his street cart. And people started coming from all over to eat his food because it was so delicious. But he had to find a way to keep it warm. So what he did was he started wrapping what he cooked in flour tortillas to keep it warm. And when he traveled, it just so happened that his street cart was a donkey. And in Mexican, burro is donkey. Burrito is little donkey. 
And the people came from all over, and what they wanted to eat was the burrito, or the food that came off the little donkey. And that's how we got the name burrito, which I just thought is a fascinatingly cute story. It's just too much fun not to tell it. So we're going to wrap our burritos in true Mexican style in just a simple mixture of beans and rice and chili. In the United States, they add all sorts of stuff. You can, you can eat burritos cold with guacamole and sour cream. You can make roasted vegetable burritos for a vegetarian dish. Uh, it, it's at, they're, they're delicious, but you just pick it up, you wrap it, and you eat it. The way Tony's mother explained it to me was that when they cooked them at home in Mexico, what her mom used to do was, or gra her grandmother used to do, would be she would put her beans on the tortilla, a little bit of rice, and a little bit of the, the, the chili filling. No cheese. They don't put it in the inside of burritos. It's not Taco Bell. <laughs> and she would wrap them and put them in a casserole dish and then top them with this wonderful uh, tomato-based cumin gravy, which I'm going to you're going to taste, and then you just pop them in the oven and eat them. But the real trick to this is the burrito wrap. So instead of teaching you how to make chili, which all of you already know how to make, we're going to show you how to wrap burritos. And we might even get a couple of people up here to wrap a couple themselves. And I'm going to do one right here. I'm going to start with one. And again, we're going to, excuse me, my, I'm getting the dry in the back. We spray our dishes. We're going to wrap 12. And we have 12 in the back that we already made yesterday. So we'll have plenty for everyone. I'm going to spray both of my dishes. Sorry about my back to the camera. Now, the first thing is not too much of anything. Too much of anything is not a good thing. Or that's what they told us, that's what they taught us in school. So we're just going to start with a generous, that's a generous tablespoon. And it should be maybe just, I need, well, I need a knife. But I'll make it this work. I'll make this work. See, I'm at tailgate. I left my butter knife at home. So I'm just going to use my spoon to spread a nice light coating. You don't want to load this up, but what it's going to do, the beans and the rice are literally going to act. If you were eating this off of the street cart, they're going to ke help keep that chili filling warm. Okay, You're insulating. It's like wrapping something in three layers of, of newspapers to keep it warm. Now we're going to add a about a third of a cup. I've researched this recipe all over the place. And I'm using this Vigo Spanish rice mix. You just cook it right the way the package tells you to. It's just a regular rice. We get this at Wegmans, Weiss, all over the place. It's authentic. They make a wonderful black bean one, too. But it's your yellow, your saffron. It's got just enough of spice in it. You don't have to do anything with it except boil it. It's wonderful. So again, we're now using another. We used the rice aroni before. I'm all for it at tailgate. This is not one of these gourmet cooking shows that we have inside the house where everything has to be purist and from. This is its tailgate. And if I can find it in a box or a can, I'm going to try to incorporate it into my menu because it's, it's all about getting people fed in a limited amount of time. You've got to get them at the stadium. You've got to get them into the game. And you've got to be cleaned up because I want to be in the game watching the game too. So we're going to put, back to the burrito making, uh, about a third of a cup of rice right in the center here. Okay. Then we're just going to take, stir a little bit of this, stir the chili. Again, amazingly, not a lot. Like a generous, a nice generous third of a cup, get a little bit of the juice. And we're just going to put it right down the center. The burrito wrap. You take the side closest to you, and if you're you can't see this, watch it up there. You're going to push this up right over the filling. You're going to take side two, and I drew you a little diagram, side two, side three. Now, you could just flop this over. You could, and it'll be fine. But I like to give it like an envelope crunch and do that into the pan, into the pan. Let's do another one. 
And then Jeannie and I are going to do an assembly line. I'm going to get one ready to go here. I have an idea. No, I don't. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's too, that's too, that's too much thinking. Okay, third of a cup corn. There it is. Third of a cup corn. Third of a cup chili. A little bit of juice. Don't worry if any juice leaks out of these things. It's all going into that pan. And if it does leak out, here's when it's going to leak out, when it's going to leak out is right here. If you can see how there's a little bit of juice coming down out of there, and if it leaks, don't worry about it. But typically, when you do this last flap, you can just pick this up, and it's, you caught it. It's right there. And it goes into the pan, flat side up. And you're just going to layer six of these in the pan. So Jeannie, do you want to come over and do one? You can put more corn in, but there's corn in my chili. So there's corn is an ingredient in my chili, in my white chicken chili. No, the beans are, I know sometimes you see them, some, they may, in your can, my husband likes them, in the can, some are vegetarian and some are, is that any particular brand? Or uh, it, it, yeah, I use the white northern, the white northern beans, 40 ounce cans of white northern. You can, you can soak them if you want, you can soak them overnight. I don't tend to do that with chili. Rice first. Who wants to be next? Who wants a wrap? Somebody's got to. Um, you can do it. <laughs> Jeannie will do one, and then you can come in and do one. Now you might want to spread that. See, so you, you might want to spread your rice out a little bit further, but this is okay. Try your wrap now. Don't try to map it too tight, because look at how, how wide mine are here, okay. see? Give it a little crimp right there with your fingertips. Very good. And so, okay, you pulled yours back, but you still did it. Fantastic. Yay, a genie burrito. Yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, I was going to let you in this way. I was going to let you in. Okay. Here's your third of a cup and your third of a cup. Perfect. Go ahead. You can scoop it that way, too. It doesn't bother me. Good. She's paying attention. Just put it anywhere in there. It's all going into these things. Okay. Close enough. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Juicy. That doesn't matter. Here, I'm going to show you what's going to happen when we bake them because we're going to bake these. You're going to. Uh, <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. There you go. I'm going to finish two more. How are we doing with the. Uh, well, how much time on the casserole? About what? Okay, good. Because we have to sal We have a salad to make it too. Now, I want to get these done a little bit faster for you guys. I really do. And I, since I don't have anybody standing in line to make burritos, I'm going to toss, I'm going to hand my tortillas and my refried beans over there, and let's do a little assembly line. You can just bring them over and hand them to me, and we'll get these rocking and rolling and be done with them. Now, I hope you're not bored, but I thought it was really important that we do this process just the way it's supposed to be done. And 12 of these, my husband and I did 12 of these last night in eight and a half minutes. So trust me, it doesn't take that long. You always thought you rolled them, so that's the tip of the minute. You always thought you did what? You rolled them, like, like I put them in and then I went roll. Roll them. Oh, you mean instead of encasing it? Yeah, now I like this way. Yeah, the, what you want to do is you want to keep your fillings in there. Mm -hmm. So when they come out, 
if it's, a, if it's cold and at room temperature, you literally pick the thing up and just eat it like a sandwich. It, it, it actually is a Mexican sandwich. The way Tony does it is a little bit different. Her, her mother turns it into a casserole. Anybody have any questions, stories to tell? I have stories to tell about. Can I tell stories about the sugar, about the Fiesta Bowl? When we went, again, it was a nice little uh, vacation for us. We had a friend who's not a football fan who lives in Tempe, Arizona. And he said he was getting out of town for the national championship game. Did we want to stay in his condo in Tempe? And we were there for nine days. And we literally... He had two bicycles, we played tennis, uh, we had use of his vehicle. We just had a wonderful time, but on his refrigerator door, he left us a place, this little sports bar that was his favorite little within walking distance place to stay, I mean place to drink. And it was called the Lunt Avenue Marble Club. Well, I couldn't imagine what that, and I still don't know what that has to do with anything. But they were playing we, we went in there for a couple drinks, and they were playing Arizona State. So all week, Joe and I, after a bike ride or after playing some tennis, would go in and have like a Bloody Mary, a cocktail. And we got to know the regular crowd, which really was, this place only seats like 30 or 35 people. It's that small. So Arizona State was playing before Penn State on the 3rd of January. Uh, they played a day or two ahead. And we went in, and we, my husband, bought like all 35 people uh, a round of drinks, pitchers of beer for all the tables, watched the Arizona State game with them. They won. They were all really happy. Uh, the guy who had gotten to know us a little bit asked if we were coming back there after the Penn State game. And my husband said, well, if you're still open, we'll stop in. So we go to the game. We were just elated. It was just such a wonderful time. Sun Devil Stadium, if you haven't been there, oh, I have to say it would be a tough call between it and Beaver Stadium on a nice day. It is that beautiful uh, to be out there. So at any rate, the game is over. I said, are we going back to the Lunt Avenue? And he goes, well, it's kind of like closing time. We'll see what happen. happens. We get there. They were still open. All of the same regulars were there waiting for us. They taped the game. We were not allowed to buy a drink. And they stayed, and we all rewatched Penn State win the game till like three o'clock in the morning. It was so neat. It was just wonderful. And we, you know, the when you win, the next thing you want to do is see the game. <laughs> and we got to, and it was just wonderful. Especially the way they won that. Oh yeah, but I, and then I have another story, a tailgating story, because it is a tailgate. We were playing the Miami Hurricanes, which is up in Scottsdale. But that is a taxi cab ride from Tempe where the game is actually being played. So we go up to the Scottsdale, what the name, is it, the name of the place is, it is the Scottsdale Sheraton, okay? And that's where the Miami team is staying. So we go in and we're just schmoozing around the hotel. We go into the bar and uh, we ordered our token Miami Hurricanes because you got to keep the glasses if you paid $5 for the drink or something like that. So we order these glasses, and we come back from Scottsdale with two. It says, Bacardi Rum Salutes the Miami Hurricanes. And of course, I'm in charge of cooking for my tailgate every year. And it was a very organized tailgate, but that's 40 to 60 people every home game, because everybody brings their families. And they would pay me for the cost of food, and I would literally do the, fo the food and plan the menus, and they would bring the satellite dishes. So we come back, and Joe and I are, of course, sitting around one night having a couple of drinks. And I said, you know, I wonder what these people do with, these, with all these glasses. It would be great to have them for our tailgate group. So of course, I had about enough of drinks in me to call. I called the Scottsdale Sheraton at about, it was like 11.30 our time. And I talked to some guy about these drink glasses. And I said, what are you doing with all those glasses? He said, who is this and who wants to know? And I said, well, I said, we were just out there for the game. And I came back with two of these glasses. And I said, I would really like to uh, get my hands on some. I said, what would it cost me to have some shipped? I said, 
what do you do with them? He said, I don't know that anybody's going to do anything with them. He said, I think they throw them away. He said, how many do you need? And I said, well, I feed 40 to 60 people. He goes, well, I don't know how many we have. I'll go downstairs and take a look. He said, I'll call you back. So Monday comes. I think it was Monday. Uh, I don't get a phone call. I didn't hear anything. Like four days later, I get 72 glasses <laughs> delivered to my door. He took my name and address. So now at our downstairs bar at our Penn State room, we have 72 Miami hurricane glasses <laughs> for the cost of shipping and handling, like $29.95 or something crazy like that. So that's my other uh, Tempe tailgate story. But that's the neat stuff about travel. And I only have three more of these to go. And just in the nick of time, I'm sure you're sick of watching me wrap and roll these. Does anybody, else, does anybody have a Tempe tailgate story? We ate some, uh, some pretty good food out there, but it, was not, it wasn't quite as impressive as uh, Louisiana was. And I don't know if it's because everything is so spread out in Tempe uh, and in Scottsdale that it's kind of, or you go there and you're dressed for a tailgate, and when you get to Scottsdale, everybody's dressed like they're dressed in Scottsdale. No, I, no, we don't, when Joe and I travel, we don't go with any of the Penn State tours or anything like that. We, if we're going to do it, we make a vacation out of it. Thank you. <laughs> we just kind of like to come and go on our own. Doesn't that smell good? Yeah, we're going to talk about that in just a second. Only one more to go after this, folks, and you don't have to watch me do this anymore, and then we'll move on. Well, if you if after 12 of them, you, you ought to know how to do it. And like I said, I just like to give that one little nip there. This is the last one I need. It's the Vigo, the Spanish, it's the Spanish rice. I wouldn't do it with regular rice. I really wouldn't. I would, if I were going to do it with regular rice, I'd probably add some saffron and some red pepper flakes to it to give it a little, a little color and a little spiciness to it. But the other, they make another one that's a black bean, which would be good, but that's uh, redundant with the beans and the chili. So I, but if you wanted to serve it as a side dish, the black bean version is really pretty good too. Oh, we are done wrapping burritos. Okay, Jeannie, if you'll take these things away. Thanks. I'll get those onto the, I apologize for what that looks like on camera, but I don't want to put my casserole in that because then it's going to go in the oven and it's going to burn to the bottom and that's a whole other cleanup story and I have issues with things that are not clean. I drive people nuts with it. No, 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 not yet, not quite. Now, the thing about this little cumin gravy is you can make this, as I've said in the recipe, you can make this, if for beef burritos, you're going to use beef stock. And for um, chicken burritos, we're using chicken stock. And again, it's stewed tomatoes, but it is literally cumin gravy. It's tomatoes and flour and chicken stock until you get this wonderful, okay? Now the next thing that happens, can I have that chicken chili back here, Jeannie? Just the chicken chili. When you've wrapped all of your, you've used your six cups of white chicken chili, okay? And you have a little bit of, this is what Tony's mother always, grandmother always did. If you have leftovers, I mean, I, my husband would eat this for lunch. But you just add what you have left into your gravy. So you're just doubling up the flavor. And you're, we're just going to top this. Now, I'm not going to add all of this today because I already added what I made from yesterday's batch to here. So we already added some of this. Thanks, Jeannie. This is about half cup. And I'm going to take this. I'm going to try not to spill it all over the place. And I'm going to take about a half a cup 
and I'm going to ladle it, nice football term, up the middle <laughs> of the burritos. Oh, those tomatoes. Is that wonderful or what? And we're going to let this, I'm going to do about two ladles of this on each pan. And it's going to drizzle down between these. I can't wait for you to taste these. And Jeannie, Jeannie and her fiancé, Ken, have affectionately named these burritos Little Donkeys. <laughs> Chicken. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or you can actually take uh, liquid out of your chili if you've made a big pot. Okay. But you should use the flavor that complements the dish. If you're using beef, use beef. And I think that looks just about wonderful. And Jeannie, I think you can take this. I'm okay with it. I think you will be. And then we have our cheese, but again, they're not real big on it. They're not, you know, we're going to top our casserole with cheese, but not a whole lot. This, this one little eight ounce package is going to go across both of these. Well, it's a whiteout. <laughs> you can't have yellow cheese at a whiteout. <laughs> no yellow cheese at a whiteout. But you could use yellow cheese. <laughs> That's it for white chicken chili burritos. Oh, they're going to go wild. Wait till you taste them. These are going in oven two at 350 for, now all you're going to do with these is 20 to 25 minutes. You're just going to heat these up till the cheese bubbles. These don't even take long to cook. And you can bring the magic of television versions out. Now, the other thing that I, I made, but I, I gave you the recipe for, is the easy double corn muffins from a box mix, and I made them. Okay, they're right here for you to taste. We're going to serve them with red pepper jelly. And that's what I like to serve if I were serving just a pot of chili at the stadium. I'd give everybody a, sti a styrofoam cup. Okay, they'd have their chili with one spoon, eat your chili. And instead of just plain old tortilla chips, I like the corn muffins. I think that a nice little corn muffin goes really good, but you can just do taco chips as well. And I think we are, well, we may as well wait till the finished ones come out. I was kind of liking this. <laughs> it's kind of like reality TV. <laughs> are you bringing the, the finished ones out? <laughs> And again, they'll go in the microwave, so there'll be lots of food for everybody. And we're good on time. It's only 2.30. I knew I would have you guys eaten, but I hoped I'd have you eaten by 3.30. I said 4 o'clock. You didn't think we could get this all done, done did you? <laughs> now, again, this, the wrap is on, but this is what they look like when they come out. And I took these out. See, that's just till the cheese melts. And what you want to do in classic Tex-Mex burrito style is you really do want, even when they come out of the oven, when they first come out of the oven, at least put some aluminum foil on and let the tortilla steam a little bit. Now, we're just going to put them in the microwave oven because you want that nice, soft, warm flour tortilla on the outside of it. So we are finishing up. Oh, goodness, we are working our way down here. Okay. And we are ready to move on to Pasadena.